Roger Federer, German pronunciation, born August 8, 1981, is a Swiss professional tennis player who is currently ranked world number three in men's singles tennis by the Association of Tennis Professionals, ADP. He is considered one of the greatest tennis players of all time. He has won 20 Grand Slam singles titles the most in history by a male player and has held the world number one spot in the ADP rankings for a record total of 310 weeks, including a record 237 consecutive weeks. After turning professional in 1998, he was continuously ranked in the top 10 from October 2002 to November 2016. In majors, Federer has won a record eight Wimbledon titles, six Australian Open titles, five US Open titles, all consecutive, a record, and one French Open title. He is one of eight men to have achieved a career Grand Slam. Federer has reached a record 31 men's singles Grand Slam finals, including 10 consecutively from the 2005 Wimbledon Championships to the 2007 US Open. Federer has also won a record 6 ADP Finals titles, 28 ADP Tour Masters 1000 titles, and a record 23 ADP Tour 500 titles. Federer is also the only player after Jimmy Connors to have won 100 or more career singles titles, as well as to amass 1,200 wins in the Open era. Federer's all-court game and versatile style of play involve exceptional footwork and shot-making. Effective both as a baseliner and a volleyer, his apparent effortlessness and efficient movement on the court have made Federer highly popular among tennis fans. He has received the Tour Sportsmanship Award 13 times and been named the ADP Player of the Year and ITF World Champion five times. He has won the Laureus World Sportsman of the Year Award a record five times, including four consecutive awards from 2005 to 2008. He is also the only person to have won the BBC Overseas Sports Personality of the Year Award four times. .mw parser output .talk limit 2 .talk level 1 ul .mw parser output .talk limit 3 .talk level 2 ul .mw parser output .talk limit 4 .talk level 3 ul .mw parser output .talk limit 5 .talk level 4 ul .mw parser output .talk limit 6 .talk level 5 ul .mw parser output .talk limit 7 .talk level 6 ul Personal life Childhood and early life Federer was born in Basel, Switzerland. His father, Robert Federer, is a Swiss German from Berneck in the canton of St. Gallen, and his mother, Lynette Federer, née Durand, is an Afrikaner from Kempton Park, Gauteng, in South Africa. Federer has one sibling, his older sister, Diana, who is the mother of a set of twins. Since his mother is South African, he holds both Swiss and South African citizenship. He grew up in nearby Beersfelden, Rehen, and then Munchenstein, close to the French and German borders, and he speaks Swiss German, Standard German, English, and French fluently, as well as functional Italian and Swedish. Swiss German is his native language. Federer served as a ball boy at his hometown Basel tournament, the Swiss Indoors, in 1992 and 1993. Federer's Signature Like all male Swiss citizens, Federer was subject to compulsory military service in the Swiss Armed Forces. However, in 2003 he was ruled unsuitable and was subsequently not required to fulfill his military obligation. Instead, he served in the Civil Protection Force and was required to pay 3% of his taxable income as an alternative. He grew up supporting FC Basel and the Swiss national football team. Federer also credits his hand-eye coordination to the wide range of sports he played as a child, including badminton and basketball. Family Federer is married to former Women's Tennis Association player Miroslava Federer, née Vavrinuk, whom he met while they were both competing for Switzerland at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Usually called Mirka, she retired from the tour in 2002 because of a foot injury. They were married at Wenkenhof Villa in Rehen near Basel on April 11, 2009, surrounded by a small group of close friends and family. In 2009, Mirka gave birth to identical twin girls. The Federers had another pair of identical twins in 2014, this time boys. 
Federer is nicknamed the Federer Express, shortened to Fed Express or FedEx, the Swiss Maestro or just Maestro. Philanthropy and Outreach In 2003, he established the Roger Federer Foundation to help disadvantaged children and to promote their access to education and sport. Since May 2004, citing his close ties with South Africa, his mother is South African, he has been supporting the South Africa Swiss charity Imbihuhu, which helps children better connect to sports as well as social and health awareness. In 2005, Federer visited South Africa to meet the children that had benefited from his support. Also in 2005, he auctioned his racket from his US Open Championship to aid victims of Hurricane Katrina. At the 2005 Pacific Life Open in Indian Wells, Federer arranged an exhibition involving several top players from the ADP and WTA tour called Rally for Relief. The proceeds went to the victims of the tsunami caused by the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. In December 2006, he visited Tamil Nadu, one of the areas in India most affected by the tsunami. He was appointed a goodwill ambassador by UNICEF in April 2006 and has appeared in UNICEF public messages to raise public awareness of AIDS. In response to the 2010 Haiti earthquake, Federer arranged a collaboration with fellow top tennis players for a special charity event during the 2010 Australian Open called Hit for Haiti, in which proceeds went to Haiti earthquake victims. He participated in a follow-up charity exhibition during the 2010 Indian Wells Masters, which raised $1 and NBSP, million. The Nadal vs Federer match for Africa in 2010 in Zurich and Madrid raised more than $4 and NBSP, million for the Roger Federer Foundation and Fundacion Rafa Nadal. In January 2011, Federer took part in an exhibition, Rally for Relief to raise money for the victims of the Queensland floods. In 2014, the match for Africa 2 between Federer and Stan Varinka, again in Zurich, raised 850,000 for education projects in southern Africa. On November 24, 2017, Federer received an honorary doctorate awarded to him by his home university, the University of Basel. He received the title in recognition for his role in increasing the international reputation of Basel and Switzerland, and also his engagement for children in Africa through his charitable foundation. Tennis career Pre-1998, Junior Years Main article, Roger Federer Junior Years Federer's main accomplishments as a junior player came at Wimbledon in 1998, where he won both the boys' singles final over Ira Klee Labads, and in doubles teamed with Olivier Rochas, defeating the team of Michael Laudra and Andy Ram. In addition, Federer reached the U.S. Open Junior Final in 1998, losing to David Nalbandian. He won four ITF Junior Singles tournaments in his career, including the prestigious Orange Bowl, where he defeated Guillermo Coria in the final. He ended 1998 with the number one junior world ranking was awarded ITF Junior World Champion, and entered his first tournament as a professional during 1998 in Gestad, where he lost to Lucas Arnold Kerr in the first round. 1998-2002, Early Professional Career Main article, Roger Federer's Early Career Federer entered the top 100 ranking for the first time on September 20, 1999 and started at the 1999 Marseille Open defeating the reigning champion of the 1998 French Open, Spaniard Carlos Moya. His first final came at the Marseille Open in 2000, where he lost to fellow Swiss Marc Rosset. Federer won the 2001 Hopman Cup representing Switzerland, along with world number one Martina Hingis. The duo defeated the American pair of Monica Seles and Jan Michael Gamble in the finals. Federer later said that his experience with Hingis definitely helped me to become the player I am today. Federer's first singles win was at the 2001 Milan Indoor Tournament, where he defeated Julian Bauter in the final. Although he won his first title already in 1999 on the Challenger Tour, winning the doubles event in Segovia, Spain with Dutchman Sander Groen, the final was played on Federer's 18th birthday. In 2001, Federer made his first Grand Slam quarterfinal at the French Open, 
losing to former world number no. 2 and eventual finalist Alex Caricchia. His run to the French quarterfinals launched him into the top 15 for the first time in his career. His international breakthrough came at the 2001 Wimbledon Championships, where the 19-year-old Federer faced the four-time defending champion and all-time Grand Slam leader Pete Sampras. Federer beat the number one seed in a five-set match to reach the quarterfinals. In the quarters he faced Englishman Tim Henman, eventually losing in a fourth-set tiebreaker. The first final he reached at the Masters level came at the 2002 Miami Masters event, where he lost to former and future number one Andre Agassi on hard court. Federer won his first Masters Series event at the 2002 Hamburg Masters on clay, over Mara Safin, the victory put him in top 10 for the first time. Federer made 10 singles finals between 1998 and 2002, of which he won 4 and lost 6. He also made 6 finals in doubles. He finished 2001 with an ADP ranking of number 13, and 2002 was the first year he was ranked within the top 10, finishing at number 6. 2003, Grand Slam Breakthrough at Wimbledon Main article, 2003 Roger Federer Tennis Season In 2003, Federer won his first Grand Slam singles title at Wimbledon, beating Andy Roddick in the semifinals and Mark Philippus's in the final. In August he had a chance to take over the number one ranking for the first time from Andre Agassi if he made it to the Montreal final. However, he fell in the semifinals to Roddick, in a final set tiebreaker, leaving him 120 points behind Agassi. This, coupled with early losses to David Nalbandian at Cincinnati and the US Open, denied Federer the chance to become number one for the duration of the season. Federer won his first and to date only doubles Masters Series 1000 event in Miami with Max Mernyi and made it to one singles Masters Series 1000 event in Rome on clay, which he lost. Federer made it to nine finals on the ADP Tour and won seven of them, including the 500 Series events at Dubai and Vienna. Lastly, Federer won the year-end championships over Andre Agassi, finishing the year as world number two, narrowly behind Andy Roddick by only 160 points. 2004, Imposing Dominance Federer at the 2004 US Open where he became the first man since 1988 to win three majors in a season. Main article, 2004 Roger Federer Tennis Season During 2004, Federer won three Grand Slam singles titles for the first time in his career and became the first person to do so since Mats Wielander in 1988. His first major hard-court title came at the Australian Open over Mara Safin, thereby becoming the world number one for the first time. He then won his second Wimbledon crown over Andy Roddick. Federer defeated the 2001 US Open champion, Leighton Hewitt, at the US Open for his first title there. Federer won three ADP Masters Series 1000 events, one was on clay in Hamburg, and the other two were on hard surfaces at Indian Wells and in Canada. Federer took the ADP 500 Series event at Dubai and wrapped up the year by winning the year-end championships for the second time. He also won his first tournament on home soil by capturing the Swiss Open in Gestad. His 11 singles titles were the most of any player in two decades, and his record of 74-6 was the best since Yvon Lendl in 1986. He reached the year-end number one ranking for the first time. 2005, Consolidating Dominance Main article, 2005 Roger Federer Tennis Season In 2005, Federer failed to reach the finals of the first two Grand Slam tournaments, losing the Australian Open semi-final to eventual champion Safin after holding match points, and the French Open semi-final to eventual champion Rafael Nadal. However, Federer quickly re-established his dominance on grass, winning the Wimbledon championships over Andy Roddick. At the US Open, Federer defeated Andre Agassi in the latter's last major final. Federer also took four ADP Masters Series 1000 wins, Indian Wells, Miami and Cincinnati on hard court, and Hamburg on clay. The win in Miami was particularly noteworthy as it was the first final contested between Federer and Nadal. Federer recovered from two sets and a breakdown to take the final in five sets. 
Furthermore, Federer won 280p 500 series events at Rotterdam and Dubai. Federer lost the year-end championships to David Nalbandian in five sets while playing through a foot injury that sidelined him for almost the rest of the season after September. He maintained his position as number one for the entire season. Federer won 11 singles titles, which ties his 2004 season. Federer's 81 match victories were the most since Pete Sampras in 1993, and his record of 81-4, 95.2%, remains the third best winning percentage in the open era behind John McEnroe's 1984 and Jimmy Connors' 1974. 2006, Career Best Season Main Article 2006 Roger Federer Tennis Season The 2006 season was statistically the best season of Federer's career. In November 2011, Stephen Tigner, chief editorial writer for Tennis.com, ranked Federer's 2006 season as statistically the second best season of all time during the Open Era, behind Rod Laver's Grand Slam year of 1969. Federer hits a forehand at the 2006 US Open where he became the first man in history to achieve the Wimbledon US Open double for three consecutive seasons Federer won 12 singles titles, the most of any player since Thomas Muster in 1995 and John McEnroe in 1984, and had a match record of 92-5, the most wins since Yvonne Lendl in 1982. Federer reached the finals in an astounding 16 of the 17 tournaments he entered during the season. In 2006, Federer won three Grand Slam singles titles and reached the final of the other, with the only loss coming against Nadal in the French Open. This was Federer and Nadal's first meeting in a Grand Slam final. He was the first man to reach all four finals in a calendar year since Rod Laver in 1969. Federer defeated Nadal in the Wimbledon Championships final. In the Australian Open, Federer defeated Marcos Bakdatis, and at the US Open, Federer defeated Roddick, 2003 champion. In addition, Federer made it to 680p Masters Series 1000 finals, winning four on hard surfaces and losing two on clay to Nadal. Federer, however, consistently pushed Nadal to the limit on clay throughout the season taking him to fourth set tiebreakers in Monte Carlo and Paris, and a thrilling match in Rome that went to a deciding fifth set tiebreaker. Federer won 180p 500 series event in Tokyo and captured the year-end championships for the third time in his career, again finishing the year as world number one. Federer only lost to two players during 2006, to Nadal four times in finals, and to 19-year-old Andy Murray in the second round of the 2006 Cincinnati Masters, in what was Federer's only defeat before reaching the final of a tournament that year. Federer finished the season on a 29-match winning streak, as well as winning 48 of his last 49 matches after the French Open. Near the end of the season he won his hometown tournament, the Swiss Indoors in Basel, Switzerland for the first time, having finished runner-up in 2000 and 2001, and missing the tournament in 2004 and 2005 due to injuries. 2007, Holding Off Young Rivals Main Article 2007 Roger Federer Tennis Season In 2007, Federer reached all four Grand Slam singles finals, winning three of them again. He won the Australian Open without dropping a set, beating Fernando Gonzalez in the final. This made him the first man in the 21st century to accomplish the feat, as Bjorn Borg at the 1980 French Open was the last to win a Grand Slam tournament without the loss of a set. Federer had entered the year on a huge winning streak and after capturing his fourth Dubai crown Federer's winning streak stood at 41 matches, the longest of his career and only five shy of the record. Federer entered Indian Wells as the three-time defending champion, but his streak ended in controversy. He was defeated by an Argentine, Guillermo Canis, who had failed a drug test for illegal doping. Federer was coined Darth Federer by fans and commentators at the 2007 US Open This surprising first-round defeat marked the first time since August 2006 he suffered defeat, a period spanning over seven months. During the clay season, Federer's victory in the Hamburg Masters final was particularly impressive, as it snapped Nadal's 81-match winning streak on clay, an open-air record. 
Federer turned the match around from a set down to sweep 12 of the final 14 games, including a final set bagel. At the French Open, some anticipated that Federer could become the first man in almost 40 years to hold all four majors simultaneously, having just resoundingly defeated young rival Nadal on clay entering the tournament. However, in a repeat of the previous year Federer played a tough four-set final against Nadal, but was undone by going 1-17th on breakpoint chances. At Wimbledon, Federer entered the tournament not only as the four-time defending champion, but also riding a 48-match winning streak on grass. Once again, he defeated Rafael Nadal for a second consecutive year in the final, this time in a thrilling five-set encounter that many analysts hailed as the greatest Wimbledon final since 1980. Victory at Wimbledon equaled him with Bjorn Borg for the record of five consecutive championships at the All England Club. Federer reached the final in Montreal before playing a young and relatively unknown Serbian named Novak Djokovic. Djokovic proved his potential by beating the world number one in a final set tiebreaker upset. Federer rebounded in Cincinnati to capture his fifth title of the year. Federer entered the US Open as the three-time defending champion and faced Djokovic in the final. This time, Federer prevailed in a close straight-set match. Victory in New York moved him ahead of Laver and Borg for third on the all-time list of major championship victories. Throughout the tournament, the American press labeled him Darth Federer for his all-black attire, which included tuxedo-striped shorts, and the tournament played the Imperial March from Star Wars when he was announced onto the court for each of his matches. He closed out the year with victories in Basel and the year-end championships in Shanghai. He finished the season as the year-end number one for the fourth year in a row, demonstrating his dominance, and during these four years he won 11 Grand Slam singles titles. After his phenomenal Triple Grand Slam season yet again, Federer became the only player in history to win three majors in a year for three years, 2004, 2006, 2007. It was the third consecutive season that Federer held the number one ranking for all 52 weeks of the year. 2008, Illness, Olympic Gold and Fifth U.S. Open Main Article, 2008 Roger Federer Tennis Season Federer's success in 2008 was severely hampered by a lingering bout of mononucleosis, which he suffered from during the first half of the year. At the end of the year he suffered a back injury. In 2008, Federer captured one Grand Slam, a singles title at the US Open over Andy Murray. Federer was defeated by Nadal in two Grand Slam finals, the French Open and Wimbledon, which was regarded as the best match of tennis history by many when he was going for six straight wins to break Bjorn Borg's record. At the Australian Open, Federer lost in the semi-finals to eventual winner Djokovic, which ended his record of ten consecutive finals. He lost twice in Masters Series 1000 finals on clay to Nadal, at Monte Carlo and Hamburg. Federer captured three titles in two 50-level events at Estoril, Halle and Basel. At the Olympic Games, Federer and Stan Wawrinka won the gold medal in doubles, after beating the Bryan Brothers American team in the semifinals and the Swedish duo of Simon Aspelin and Thomas Johansson in the final. However, Federer could only reach the quarterfinals in the singles draw, bowing out to then number 8 James Blake, succumbing his number 1 ranking to Nadal after being at the top for a record 237 consecutive weeks. He ended the year ranked number 2. 2009, Career Grand Slam and Major Title Record Main Article, 2009 Roger Federer Tennis Season Federer entered the 2009 season with 13 Grand Slams, only one behind Pete Sampras' all-time record. The season began with a loss to Nadal in the final of the Australian Open in a hotly contested five-set match. Federer struggled following the defeat in Melbourne and entered the clay season without a title. Federer winning the French Open, and completing the career Grand Slam. Federer's season turned around in the final Masters event of the clay season when he defeated Nadal on clay for only the second time to capture the Madrid Masters. Federer entered the French Open with few predicting him to win the elusive Parisian title having lost to Nadal in the final weekend for the past four seasons. After Nadal's unexpected defeat to Robin Soderling, Federer became the overwhelming favorite. 
In his next match, he came from two sets and break point down in the third set to defeat Tommy Haas in five sets. He also fought back from a two sets to one deficit against a young Juan Martin Del Potro to win a five setter in the semi finals. In the final, he faced Soderling, and with straight sets victory, he finally captured the Coupe des Mousquetaires and career Grand Slam. This victory also tied him with Pete Sampras for the most Grand Slam singles titles. Federer turned his sights to the grass courts of Wimbledon, where he breezed his way up to the final. In the championship match he faced longtime rival Andy Roddick in what was their eighth and final meeting at a Grand Slam. Roddick pushed Federer into a record-setting fifth set, which Federer claimed 16-14 to win his 15th Grand Slam singles title, breaking the all-time record of Pete Sampras. Federer continued his summer run by winning his third title on the lightning-fast courts of the Cincinnati Masters, defeating Novak Djokovic in the final. At the US Open he defeated Soderling in the quarters and Djokovic, for the third consecutive year, in the semifinals. On the penultimate point of the Djokovic match he hit what many consider to be the greatest shot of his career, a tweener winner, to set up match points. Federer played Del Potro in the final and led two sets to one before ultimately losing a fourth set tiebreaker and subsequently the match. The 2009 season was perhaps the most historically relevant of Federer's career as he completed a career Grand Slam by winning his first French Open title and won a men's record 15th Grand Slam singles title at Wimbledon, surpassing Pete Sampras' mark of 14. The Wimbledon final was also historic for being the longest Grand Slam final in terms of games played with Federer prevailing 16-14 in the fifth set. Federer finished the season as the year-end number one for the fifth time in his career. 2010, Fourth Australian Open Main article, 2010 Roger Federer Tennis Season Federer won a record 16th major at the 2010 Australian Open. Federer started the year with a win at the Australian Open, where he defeated Andy Murray in the final extending the Grand Slam singles record to 16 titles and matching Andre Agassi's record of four Australian Open titles. Since Wimbledon 2005 Federer had made 18 out of 19 finals in Grand Slam tournaments, a period of sustained excellence unparalleled in the Open era. This tournament, however, marked the end of his dominance at the majors. At the French Open, Federer won his 700th Tour match and 150th Tour match on clay. However, he failed to reach a Grand Slam semi-final for the first time since the 2004 French Open, losing to Soderling in the last eight and relinquishing his number one ranking, having been just one week away from equaling Pete Sampras's record of 286 weeks as world number one. In a huge upset at Wimbledon, Federer lost in the last eight again to Tomas Berdych and fell to number three in the rankings for the first time in six years and eight months. Towards the middle of July, Federer hired Pete Sampras' old coach Paul Anacone on a trial basis to put his tennis game and career back on track. At the 2010 US Open, Federer reached the semifinals, where he lost a five-set match to Novak Djokovic after holding two match points. Federer made it to four Masters 1000 finals, prevailing at the Cincinnati Masters against Marty Fish. Federer finished the year in strong form, winning indoor titles at the Stockholm Open. Swiss indoors, and the ADP World Tour Finals in London, which brought his tally to 66 career titles. Federer won the year-end championships in London by beating rival Rafael Nadal for his fifth title at the event. He beat all contenders except Nadal in straight sets. It remains the only tournament in his career where Federer defeated all fellow members of the Big Four. Since Wimbledon 2010, Federer had a win-loss record of 34-4. Federer finished in the top two for the eighth consecutive season. 2011, Tour Finals Title Record Main Article, 2011 Roger Federer Tennis Season The year 2011 was a lean year for Federer, although great by most players' standards. He was defeated in straight sets in the semifinals of the 2011 Australian Open by eventual champion Novak Djokovic marking the first time since July 2003 that he did not hold any of the four major titles. In the French Open semifinals, 
Federer ended Djokovic's undefeated streak of 43 consecutive wins with a four-set victory. Federer then lost in the final to Rafael Nadal. At Wimbledon, Federer advanced to his 29th consecutive Grand Slam quarterfinal, losing to Joe Wilfried Tsonga. It marked the first time in his career that he had lost a Grand Slam tournament match after winning the first two sets. At the US Open, Federer lost in the semifinals to Novak Djokovic in five sets. In a repeat of previous year's semifinal event, Federer again squandered two match points on his own serve before losing after winning first two sets for second consecutive time in the year. Also, this loss meant that it was the first time since 2002 that Federer didn't win any of the four Grand Slam titles. In September 2011, in a South African poll, Federer was voted the second most trusted and respected person in the world, next to Nelson Mandela. Federer finished the season successfully in the indoor season, winning his last three tournaments of the year at the Swiss Indoors, Paris Masters, and ADP World Tour Finals, forming a 16-match winning streak. Federer finished the year ranked number 3. 2012, Wimbledon title, returned to number 1 and Olympic silver. Main article, 2012 Roger Federer tennis season. The 2012 season for Federer had his most match wins since 2006 and his highest winning percentage and number of titles won since 2007. Federer reached the semi-final of the 2012 Australian Open, setting up a 27th career meeting with Nadal, a match he lost in four sets. He then won the Rotterdam Open for the first time since 2005, defeating Juan Martin Del Potro. Federer played in the 2012 Dubai Tennis Championships, where he defeated Andy Murray in the final and won the championship title for the fifth time in his career. Federer then moved on to the Indian Wells Masters, where he defeated Rafael Nadal in the semifinals, and John Isner in the final. Federer won the title for a record fourth time, and, in doing so, equaled Nadal's record of 19 ADP Masters 1000 titles. Federer won a record 17th major, a record equaling 7th Wimbledon, and returned to number 1. Federer went on to compete at the Madrid Masters on the new blue clay surface, where he beat Tomas Berdych in the final, thus regaining the number 2 ranking from Rafael Nadal. In the French Open, Federer made the semi-finals before losing to Djokovic in straight sets, in a rematch of previous year's semi-final. At Wimbledon, Federer had a five-set match in the third round against Julian Beneteau on his way to the winning the tournament. Federer defeated Andy Murray in four sets in the 2012 Wimbledon final, regaining the number one ranking in the process. It's amazing. It equals me with Pete Sampras, who's my hero. It just feels amazing, Federer said of winning his seventh Wimbledon championship, tying Sampras' open-era record. By defeating top-ranked Djokovic in the semifinals and winning in the finals, Federer returned to the top spot in the world rankings and, in doing so, broke Sampras' record of 286 weeks atop the list. In the 2012 Summer Olympics, Federer played a 4-hour 26-minute semifinal against Del Potro where Federer won 19-17 in the third and final set. In a lopsided match, he lost to Murray in straight sets in the final winning a silver medal for his country. Federer won the Cincinnati Open in August, beating Novak Djokovic in the final. In the US Open, five-time champ Federer was defeated by Tomas Berdic in the quarterfinals. At the Shanghai Masters, after defeating Varinka in the third round, Federer confirmed his 300th week at number one. Federer made it to the finals of the ADP finals, where he lost to Djokovic in two sets. 2013, Injury Struggles, Fall in Rankings Main Article, 2013 Roger Federer Tennis Season Federer developed back injuries in March and July and his ranking dropped from number 2 to number 6. The 2013 season was the first since 1999 in which Federer failed to reach a final in the first four months of the year. Federer's first and only title of 2013 came at the Gary Weber Open, defeating Mikhail Yuzny, where he also played doubles with good friend Tommy Haas. With the victory in Halley, he tied John McEnroe for the third most number of ADP titles won by a male player in the Open era. 
Federer, however, was unable to maintain his form into Wimbledon, suffering his worst Grand Slam tournament defeat since 2003 in the second round against Sergei Stokowski. Not only did the loss end Federer's record streak of 36 consecutive quarterfinals at Grand Slam tournaments, it meant he would drop out of the top four for the first time since July 2003. During the summer, he experimented with various different rackets and played the German Open with a blacked-out 98-inch Wilson racket, instead of his regular Pro Staff 6.190 BLX racket with the smaller 90-inch hitting area. He returned to his regular racket for the second half of the season. After Wimbledon, Federer continued to be upset early in tournaments in Hamburg and Gestad because of a serious back injury through October, when he announced that he was parting ways with Paul Anacone his coach for the last three years. Federer made the final in Basel, succumbing to Juan Martin Del Potro in three sets, and indicated it was a mistake to have played certain tournaments while suffering from a back injury. On December 27, 2013, Federer announced that Stefan Edberg was joining his team as CEO coach with Severin Luthi. 2014, Davis Cup win. Main article 2014 Roger Federer Tennis Season Federer began the season by changing rackets for the first time in his career, from his long time frame of 90 square inches to one measured at 97 square inches. He had long been at a comparative disadvantage in equipment as almost the entire tour, including his top rivals Nadal and Djokovic, used more powerful frames of between 95 and 100 square inches. At the Australian Open, Federer defeated Joe Wilfried Tsonga and Andy Murray to reach his 11th consecutive semi-final in Melbourne, before losing to Rafael Nadal in straight sets. At the Dubai Tennis Championships, he defeated Novak Djokovic in the semi-finals, and then defeated Tomas Berdic in the final to win his sixth Dubai crown and his first title since Halley in 2013. Federer made the final at the Indian Wells Masters, but lost to Novak Djokovic in a final set tiebreaker. At the Davis Cup quarterfinals, Federer won both of his singles rubbers against Kazakhstan, the second of which was the first live deciding rubber of his Davis Cup career. Federer then took a wild card into the Monte Carlo Masters defeating Novak Djokovic on his way to the finals, but lost to compatriot Stan Varinka in a tight final. In June, Federer announced that after the end of his third term, he would resign as president of the ADP Players' Council a position he had held since 2008. At the Halley Open, Federer reached both the singles and the doubles finals and won his seventh Halley singles title, beating Alejandro Falla in the final. At Wimbledon, Federer reached a record ninth final, but he was defeated by Djokovic in an epic five-set match. Federer receiving serve against Richard Gasquet in the title-clinching match for Switzerland at the 2014 Davis Cup. Federer made the final of the Canadian Open but was defeated by Joe Wilfried Tsonga. Federer defeated Spain's David Ferrer in three sets to capture his sixth Cincinnati crown and 22nd ADP World Tour Masters 1000 title, his first in Cincinnati since 2012. He then reached the semifinals at the US Open but lost in straight sets to eventual champion Marin Cilic. At the Davis Cup semifinals, Federer won both his singles matches against Italy in straight sets and led Switzerland to the final for the first time since 1992. Federer then played in the Shanghai Masters. He beat Novak Djokovic in the semifinals, ending the Serbs' 28-match unbeaten run on Chinese soil. He battled Frenchman Gilles Simon in his second Shanghai final, defeating him in two tiebreak sets and collected the 23rd Masters 1000 title of his career. The victory saw Federer return to the number two ranking for the first time since May 2013. Federer then played the Swiss indoors in October, where he won a record sixth title and his 82nd ADP men's singles title overall. Federer also reached the finals of the 2014 ADP World Tour Finals to face Djokovic again, but withdrew from the final because of another back injury from his semi final match against Stan Varinka. Despite his injury, Federer finished the season on a high by defeating Richard Gasquet to clinch the Davis Cup for Switzerland for the first time in its history. The final was held at the Stade Pierre Moroy in Lille, France attracting over 27,000 spectators per match, 
this broke attendance record for the highest ever officially sanctioned competition tennis match. 2015, 1000th victory, Wimbledon and Amp, US Open Finals. Main article, 2015 Roger Federer tennis season. Federer started his season at the Brisbane International. He defeated Milos Raonic in the final, thereby becoming only the third man in the Open era to have 1,000 or more wins, joining Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lendl, as well as the first man in the Open era to win at least one title in each of 15 consecutive years. In Dubai, Federer successfully defended his title with a straight-set victory over Novak Djokovic in the final, marking his seventh title at the tournament and, after Wimbledon and Halley, was the third time he had won seven or more titles in a tournament. Additionally, Federer became the fourth person since 1991 to surpass 9,000 career aces. In March, he reached the final of the Indian Wells, but lost in three sets to defending champion Djokovic. Federer won his third title of the season at the inaugural Istanbul Open Clay Court Tournament, ending a title drought on red clay since the 2009 French Open. Federer made it to the final of the Italian Open in May, but was unable to win his first title there, losing to Djokovic in the final. In the French Open he made it through the first rounds losing just one set, to Gael Monfils in the fourth. In the quarterfinals, he was eventually beaten in straight sets by the later champion Stan Varinka. As the new expanded grass season began, Federer won his record eighth Gary Weber Open and become only the third man in the Open era to win a title eight times. Federer entered Wimbledon as the second seed. He played a flawless match to defeat Andy Murray in straight sets in the semifinals and advanced to his tenth Wimbledon final in a repeat against Novak Djokovic. Federer lost the match in four sets. He defeated Andy Murray and Novak Djokovic in straight sets to win the Cincinnati Masters for the seventh time. This marked the first time that Federer had beaten the top two players in the world at the same tournament. At the US Open, he advanced to his first final there since 2009 without dropping a set, including a win over Stan Varinka in the semifinals. In the final, he was once again defeated by top seed Djokovic in four sets. At the Swiss Indoors Tournament in Basel, Federer won his sixth singles title of the year, and his 88th ADP title defeating his old rival Rafael Nadal in the final. It was the seventh time he had captured his hometown tournament. In December, Federer announced that he would enter the 2016 ADP World Tour season with a new-look coaching team, having additionally announced that Stefan Edberg would not be traveling with him next year. While countryman Severin Luthi remained Federer's head coach, Joining the team in 2016 was Croatian former world number no. three player Ivan Lchabisic. Federer revealed that Edberg originally signed on to the coaching team for one season only in 2014, but agreed to stay on in 2015. 2016, knee surgery, back injury and amp, long recovery hiatus. Main article, 2016 Roger Federer tennis season. Federer started his season in the Brisbane International as the defending champion, despite having a virus when the tournament started. However, in a rematch of the previous year's final, he lost in the final to Milos Raonic in straight sets. Federer then participated at the 2016 Australian Open and rebounded from his third-round defeat by Andreas Seppi in 2015 by reaching the semi-finals but lost to eventual champion Novak Djokovic in four sets. The day after his loss to Djokovic, Federer sustained a knee injury and in early February, he underwent arthroscopic surgery to repair a torn meniscus in his knee and missed the tournaments in Rotterdam, Dubai and Indian Wells in February and March. He was scheduled to return to action in Miami. Due to a stomach virus he had to withdraw from Miami thus prolonging his time on the sidelines. Federer made his comeback at the Monte Carlo Masters losing in the quarterfinals to Joe Wilfried Psanga in three sets. In Madrid, he suffered a back injury during practice and withdrew shortly after arriving. He then participated in the Internazionale BNL d'Italia where he lost in the third round to Dominic Thiem. His withdrawal from the French Open broke a record run of 65 consecutive participations in the main draw of Grand Slam tournaments, stretching back to the 2000 Australian Open. 
Still suffering from recurring knee pain during the grass season he lost in the semifinals of Stuttgart and Halle. On July 6, he came back from two sets down to defeat Marin Silic in five sets in the 2016 Wimbledon quarterfinals, equaling Jimmy Connors' all-time records of 11 Wimbledon semifinals and 84 match wins. He suffered his first defeat in a Wimbledon semifinal two days later in a five-set loss to Raonic, re-injuring his knee in the fifth set. On July 26, Federer announced that he would miss the 2016 Summer Olympics and the remainder of the 2016 season to fully recover from his knee injury. The sudden withdrawal not only implied that 2016 was his first season since 2000 that Federer failed to win a title, but it also meant that he would have to drop out of top 10 for the first time in 14 years. This, combined with a Grand Slam drought spanning over four years, led to many analysts believing that his outstanding career was finally coming to an end and he would never win any major titles again. 2017, Renaissance, Australian Open and AMP, Wimbledon titles. Main article, 2017 Roger Federer tennis season. Federer's 2017 season marked a return to Grand Slam wins since 2012, the most titles since 2007, and the highest win percentage since 2006. Statistically, this season was his best since 2007. Federer played in the Hopman Cup and Australian Open in January 2017. His withdrawal from most of the injury-affected 2016 season lead his ranking slip to number 17 at the start of Australian Open, his lowest in over 15 years. At the Australian Open, he beat top 10 players Tomas Berdych and Kanishi Kori on his way to semi-finals, making Federer the oldest man to compete in a Grand Slam semi-final since Jimmy Connors in 1991. In the semi-finals, he defeated Stanislas Varinka in five sets, making him the oldest player to compete in a Grand Slam final since Ken Rosewall in 1974. Coming back from a breakdown in the fifth set, Federer defeated Rafael Nadal to win the Australian Open, which also marked Federer's 100th match at the Australian Open, it was the first time Federer had won a match against Nadal in a Grand Slam event since the 2007 Wimbledon final and also marked Federer's first ever Grand Slam victory over Nadal outside the grass courts of Wimbledon. With this victory, he re-entered the top 10. In March, Federer won his 25th Masters title at Indian Wells, defeating Varinka in the final and gaining another victory over Nadal in the fourth round. This was also Federer's 90th career title and he climbed to number 6 in the ADP rankings. Federer collected his 26th Masters title by defeating Nadal in the final of the Miami Masters in straight sets and climbed to number 4 in the ADP rankings. This marked the third time Federer had won in Indian Wells and Miami back-to-back, -back, colloquially referred to as the Sunshine Double, 2005, 2006 and 2017. Due to concerns about his longevity, Federer decided that he would skip the entire clay court season. He returned to the tour at the beginning of the grass court season in Stuttgart, where he suffered a shock defeat to Tommy Haas in the second round despite holding match points, the lowest ranked player, number 302, to beat him since number 407 Bjorn Fa in 1999. He rebounded the following week by winning a record extending ninth title at the Gary Weber Open in Halle, doing so without the loss of a set. In the 2017 Wimbledon Championships, Federer made it to the final without dropping a set, defeating Milos Raonic in the quarterfinals and Tomas Berdych in the semifinals. In the final, Federer defeated a physically and mentally out of sorts Marin Silic in straight sets to win a record breaking 8th Wimbledon gentlemen's singles title and his record extending 19th major title overall, becoming the oldest male player to win Wimbledon in the Open era. Federer became the second man in the open era to win Wimbledon without dropping a set after Bjorn Borg in 1976. It marked the second time in his career that he had won a Grand Slam tournament without losing a set, matching his performance at the 2007 Australian Open. Federer moved up to become number three in the ADP rankings after the event and qualified for the ADP finals for a record 15th time. At the opening of the summer hardcourt swing Federer was defeated in the final of the Montreal Masters by Alexander Zverev after injuring his back during the match. 
Due to the injury, he opted to withdraw from the Cincinnati Masters to be fit for the U.S. Open. However, Federer lost to Del Potro in the quarterfinals at the U.S. Open, in a tournament characterized by inconsistent play from Federer, unlike the major portion of the season. Federer's next participation was in September in the inaugural Laver Cup, representing Team Europe. Federer won both his singles matches against Sam Querrey and Nick Kyrgios, with the latter win sealing the cup for Europe. The tournament was also notable for Federer playing doubles teaming with longtime rival Nadal for the first time. The two legends emerged victorious against world duo of Sam Querrey and Jack Sock. At the Shanghai Masters, Federer captured his third Masters title of the season, defeating number one Rafael Nadal in the final. This was Federer's fifth straight victory over Nadal in their rivalry and his 94th career title, drawing him level with second-placed Ivan Lendl. During the indoor season, Federer defeated Juan Martin Del Potro in the final of his hometown tournament, the Swiss Indoors in Basel, earning a record eighth championship there and winning his 95th career title, surpassing Ivan Lendl in number of career titles. Federer qualified for the 2017 ADP finals but was beaten by David Goffin in the semifinals in three sets. 2018, 20th major title and 310 weeks at number one. Main article, 2018 Roger Federer tennis season. Federer started his season winning the Hopman Cup partnering with Belinda Bensick. This was his second Hopman Cup title, having won previously in 2001 with Martina Hingis. At the 2018 Australian Open, Federer reached the final without dropping a set, and successfully defended his title beating Marin Silic in a five-set final. This was Federer's sixth title at the Australian Open, equaling the then-record held by Roy Emerson and Novak Djokovic, which was surpassed by Djokovic in 2019. He also became the first man to win 20 Grand Slam titles. It was also the first time since the 2008 US Open that Federer successfully defended a major title. In mid-February, Federer won his third Rotterdam Open title to return to number one in the ADP rankings, clinching the spot with a quarter-final victory over Robin Haas. He beat Grigor Dimitrov in straight sets in the final. At 36 years and 195 days of age, he became the oldest ADP world number one by more than three years. He also broke the ADP record for the longest span between a player's first and last weeks to attain the number one ranking at 14 years and 17 days apart, as well as the most time between two successive reigns at number one at five years and 106 days. In March, Federer entered the Indian Wells Masters as the defending champion. He defeated Chung Hyun in the quarterfinals, ensuring that he retained the world number one ranking, and Borna Korak in the semifinals solidifying a career-best start to a season at 17-0. His previous best season start had been 16-0 during the 2006 season. Despite holding three championship points, Federer was defeated by Juan Martin Del Potro in a close three-set final. At the Miami Open, Federer received a first-round bye, but lost in the second round to Thanasi Kokonakis. With this early exit from the tournament, Federer lost his number one ranking to Nadal on April 2. He announced that he would miss the clay court season, including the French Open, for the second consecutive season. Nevertheless, he regained the number one ranking in May after Nadal failed to defend one of his Masters titles at the Madrid Open. He then lost the top spot the following week after Nadal won the title at the Italian Open. In June, Federer regained the number one ranking after defeating Nick Kyrgios in the semifinals at the Stuttgart Open. He then won the tournament, defeating Milos Raonic in the final in straight sets. However, he lost his number one ranking the following week when he failed to defend his Halle Open title, losing in the final to Borna Korak in three sets. At Wimbledon, Federer was looking to defend his 2017 title and was seeded first at a Grand Slam for the first time since the 2012 US Open but lost in the quarter-finals against South African Kevin Anderson in five sets, despite winning the first two sets and having a match point in the third set. This was only his second Wimbledon defeat after winning the first two sets since his defeat to Joe Wilfried Tsonga at the 2011 Wimbledon Championships.
Federer next played in Cincinnati where he lost in the final to Novak Djokovic, who won a record career Golden Masters, in straight sets. The loss ended Federer's run of 100 consecutive service holds and 14-match winning streak in Cincinnati. Federer entered the U.S. Open as the second seed but was upset by John Millman in the fourth round, citing extreme conditions of heat and humidity that took a toll on his body. Federer then played at the Laver Cup where he successfully helped Team Europe defend their title, winning both his singles matches against Nick Kyrgios and John Isner. He also paired up with Djokovic for the first time in doubles, losing their match against Jack Sock and Kevin Anderson in three sets. Federer then played at the 2018 Shanghai Masters as the defending champion but lost in the semifinals to Borna Korik in straight sets. At the Swiss indoors in October, Federer shared that he had sustained a hand injury in training prior to the grass season that had caused severe pain up his forearm. He stated that this injury significantly hindered his play, particularly his forehand, since the Stuttgart Open. Federer went on to defend his title with a straight sets win over Marius Kopil in the final, winning his ninth title at the event and his 99th career singles title. Federer entered the Paris Masters, continuing his good run of form defeating Fabio Fognini and Kanishi Kori in straight sets. In the semi-finals, he played a very close match with Novak Djokovic, but ultimately lost to him in three sets. At the Nitto ADP finals, Federer lost in straight sets to Alexander Zverev in the semi-final. 2019, Hopman Cup record, 100 titles, 1,200 match wins, 12th Wimbledon final. Main article, 2019 Roger Federer tennis season. Federer opened his campaign by retaining the Hopman Cup alongside Belinda Bensick, becoming the first player to win the mixed gender event three times. Federer was seeded third at the Australian Open, entering as the two-time defending champion. He defeated Dennis Istomin, Dan Evans and Taylor Fritz to reach the fourth round, where he faced 14th seed Stefanos Tsitsipas. In a stunning upset, Tsitsipas defeated Federer in four close sets. Critically, Federer was unable to convert any of the 12 break points he held throughout the match, including four set points in the second set. After the match Federer announced he will play the clay court season for the first time since 2016. At the Dubai Tennis Championships, Federer won his 100th career singles title, beating Tsitsipas in straight sets in the final. It was his eighth title in Dubai and he became only the second man after Jimmy Connors to reach the three-figure mark in the Open era. Federer then reached the final of the 2019 Indian Wells Masters where he lost to Dominic Thiem in three sets. On March 31, Federer defeated John Isner at the 2019 Miami Open in straight sets to win his fourth Miami Open title and 28th Masters 1000 title. Federer then played his first clay court tournament in three years at the 2019 Madrid Open and secured his 1,200th career win, beating Gael Monfils in the third round. In the quarterfinals he lost to Dominic Thiem again in three sets, despite having two match points in the second set. Federer then played at the Italian Open and reached the quarterfinals but was forced to withdraw from his quarterfinal match against Stefanos Tsitsipas due to a right leg injury. Federer next played at the French Open for the first time in four years and seeded third in the draw. Federer achieved comfortable straight set victories against Lorenzo Sonigo, Oscar Ada, Casper Ruud, and Leonardo Mayer to reach the quarterfinals, where he faced good friend and compatriot Stan Varinka. Federer managed to avenge his loss to Varinka at the same stage of the tournament four years ago, winning in four sets after three hours and 35 minutes. With the victory Federer returned to the semifinals of the French Open for the first time since 2012, where he lost to 11-time champion Rafael Nadal in straight sets. Federer then began his grass court season at the 2019 Halley Open where he won his 10th title at the event defeating David Goffin in the final in straight sets. This marked the first time Federer had won a singles tournament for 10 times or more. At the Wimbledon Championships, Roger Federer reached his record 12th final at the tournament after ousting his nemesis Rafael Nadal in four sets in the semi-final, thus exacting revenge for his earlier defeat to him at the French Open. 
This was also the first time Federer played Nadal at Wimbledon since the 2008 Wimbledon final, a match regarded by some as the greatest match in the history of tennis. Federer then faced Novak Djokovic in the final, against whom he lost in a five-set thriller lasting four hours and 57 minutes, despite having two championship points on serve in the fifth set. The match also marked the first time a fifth-set tiebreaker was played at 12 games all in the men's singles and was the longest men's final in Wimbledon history. National Representation Davis Cup Federer made his Davis Cup for Switzerland debut in the World Group first round against Italy in 1999 at 17 years of age. In his first match he defeated Davide Sanguinetti in four sets and recorded a second singles victory in a dead rubber two days later as Switzerland advanced to the World Group quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals Federer, who was still 17 years old, suffered his first Davis Cup loss when he was defeated by Belgian Christophe van Garst in five sets. The Swiss team went on to lose the rubber 3-2. A year later, Federer competed in his first Davis Cup doubles rubber where he teamed with countryman Lorenzo Manta to defeat Australians Wayne Arthurs and Sandon Stahl in four sets. Despite the doubles victory, Federer lost both singles rubbers to Mark Philippuses and Leighton Hewitt which saw Switzerland sent to the World Group playoffs for the first time in Federer's career. He returned for the playoffs in July 2000 and led Switzerland to a 5-0 win over Belarus by recording wins in singles and doubles. His first Davis Cup highlight came in 2003 as the newly crowned Wimbledon champion led his country to an historic semi-final run. After recording five wins and ties against the Netherlands and France, the Swiss team travelled to Melbourne to play the highly rated Australians. Federer once again defeated Wimbledon runner-up Mark Philippuses in the second rubber but allowed the Australians to lead the tie 2-1 going into day three after dropping the doubles rubber in five sets. Federer then played Leighton Hewitt in a sudden death situation for Switzerland and despite leading two sets to love, succumbed to a fast finishing Hewitt in five sets. Australia went on to claim the Davis Cup title months later as Federer's interest in Davis Cup began to wane and his focus shifted to his personal career. He skipped many ties over the years but often competed in the World Group playoffs in order for Switzerland to maintain their place in the top division. The emergence of countryman Stanislas Varinka as a Grand Slam singles champion in 2014 renewed hope for Federer in his Davis Cup quest, and the pair both committed to playing each tie that year. Their commitment paid off as wins over Serbia, Kazakhstan and Italy allowed the Swiss team to advance to the 2014 Davis Cup final. Leading into the final, Federer was suffering from a back injury that threw serious doubt over Switzerland's chance to claim the title and a second rubber straight sets loss to Gael Monfil seemingly spelled the worst for Switzerland. However, a rejuvenated Federer returned the next day to help claim the doubles rubber, which set up a fourth rubber singles tie between Federer and Richard Gasquet. Federer defeated Gasquet in straight sets and in doing so handed Switzerland its first, and only to date, Davis Cup title. Federer holds many Davis Cup records for Switzerland that includes most total wins, most singles wins and most years played. Olympic Games An 18-year-old Federer made his Olympic debut at Sydney in 2000, where he entered the singles competition. He surprised many by reaching the semifinals but lost to Tommy Haas in the semifinals and then to Arnaud de Pascal in the bronze medal match, causing Federer to leave Sydney empty-handed. At the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, Federer was the clear favourite after claiming the world number one ranking earlier in the year and capturing the Australian Open and Wimbledon titles. However, he lost in the second round to 18-year-old Tomas Berdych. In doubles, he and compatriot Eva Legro lost in the second round. At the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, Federer was again the top seed and favourite, but lost in the quarterfinals to James Blake. However, he found more success on the doubles court, capturing the gold medal in men's doubles with compatriot Stan Varinka, defeating Simon Aspelin and Thomas Johansson of Sweden. At both the Athens and Beijing Olympic Games, Federer was the flag bearer for Switzerland in the opening ceremony. At London 2012, Federer won his first singles medal, losing to Andy Murray in the final to claim the silver. He and Varinka were unable to defend their gold medal in doubles 
losing in the second round to Jonathan Ehrlich and Andy Ram of Israel. Federer did not compete in the 2016 Rio Olympics after taking the rest of the season off after Wimbledon to recover from a knee injury. Hopman Cup Federer won the 2001 Hopman Cup representing Switzerland, along with Martina Hingis. The duo defeated the American pair of Monica Seles and Jan Michael Gamble in the finals. He also played the next year, along with his current wife Mirka Vavrinik, but they lost in the round robin stage. Federer played again at the Hopman Cup in 2017, along with Belinda Bensick. They won all of their ties except the last one, and as a result they couldn't make the final. In 2018, Federer won his second Hopman Cup title and third overall for Switzerland. His partner was Belinda Bensick again. The Swiss team won all the ties and Federer won all his singles and mixed doubles matches. They defeated the German pair, Alexander Zverev and Angelique Kerber, in the final 2-1. Federer won his third and second consecutive Hopman Cup title in 2019 alongside Belinda Bensick. They again defeated Alexander Zverev and Angelique Kerber of Germany in the final, and won the final tie 2-1 by winning a tiebreak in the final set of the mixed doubles, 5-4. Federer again won all of his singles matches. The Swiss team only lost one tie to Greece, 1-2. Roger Federer is the most successful individual in Hopman Cup, three titles, history. International representation. Laver Cup. Federer founded the Laver Cup, which pits Europe against the rest of the world. The tournament is named in honor of Rod Laver and the inaugural edition was played in 2017. Europe won the inaugural Laver Cup in 2017. Federer played his first singles match on day two, when he dispatched Sam Quarry in straight sets. Later on day two, he partnered with his rival Nadal in doubles, where they defeated the team world duo of Sam Quarry and Jack Sock in the match tie-breaker, which took place at one set all. This was the first time Federer and Nadal competed on the same side of a doubles match. On day three, Federer competed in the final match of the tournament, where he sealed victory for Team Europe by defeating Nick Kyrgios in the champions tie-break, saving a match point. With three wins and seven points, Federer was the most accomplished player of the tournament. The second edition was played in 2018. The European team led by Federer retained the title after defeating Team World, 13-8. Federer won both his singles matches, against Nick Kyrgios and John Isner, but lost both his doubles matches. Rivalries See also, Big Four, Tennis Federer vs Nadal Main article, Federer-Nadal rivalry Federer and Nadal ahead of the 2008 Wimbledon final. Federer and Rafael Nadal have played 40 times, with Federer trailing 16-24. Federer has a winning record on grass 3-1 and hard courts 11-9, while Nadal leads on clay 14-2. Because tournament seedings are based on rankings, 24 of their matches have been in tournament finals which have included an all-time record 9 Grand Slam finals. Federer and Nadal have been playing each other since 2004, and their rivalry is a significant part of both men's careers. The latest encounter was at the 2019 Wimbledon Championships, where Federer won to reach the final. They held the top two rankings on the ADP Tour from July 2005 until August 17, 2009, when Nadal fell to number three, Andy Murray became the new number two and again from September 11, 2017 until October 15, 2018, Novak Djokovic became the new number two. They are the only pair of men to have ever finished six consecutive calendar years at the top. Federer was ranked number one for a record 237 consecutive weeks beginning in February 2004. Nadal, who is five years younger, ascended to number 2 in July 2005 and held this spot for 160 consecutive weeks, before surpassing Federer in August 2008. From 2006 to 2008, they played in every French Open and Wimbledon final. They then met in the 2009 Australian Open final, the 2011 French Open final, and the 2017 Australian Open final. Nadal won 6 of the 9 
losing the first two Wimbledon finals and the second Australian Open final. Four of these finals were five set matches, 2007 and 2008 Wimbledon, 2009 and 2017 Australian Open, with the 2008 Wimbledon final being lauded as the greatest match ever by many long-time tennis analysts. Of their 40 meetings, 13 have reached a deciding set. They have also played in 12 Masters Series finals, including their lone five-hour match at the 2006 Rome Masters which Nadal won in a fifth-set tie-break, having saved two match points. Federer vs. Djokovic Main article, Djokovic-Federer rivalry Federer and Djokovic, Cincinnati Masters Final 2015 Federer and Novak Djokovic have played 48 times, with Federer trailing 22-26. They are tied 4-4 on clay while Federer trails 17-19 on hard courts and 1-3 on grass. The Federer-Jokovic rivalry is the largest rivalry in men's Grand Slam tournament history with a record 16 matches played against each other. Jokovic is the only player besides Nadal to defeat Federer in consecutive Grand Slam tournaments, 2010 US Open and 2011 Australian Open, also 2015 Wimbledon. US Open and 2016 Australian Open, and the only player besides Nadal and Murray who has double-figure career wins over Federer. Djokovic is one of two players, the other again being Nadal, on tour to have defeated Federer in straight sets at a Grand Slam event multiple times, 2008 Australian Open, 2011 Australian Open, 2012 French Open, both the players have done so three times. Of their 48 meetings, 19 have reached a deciding set. Federer and Djokovic first played in a Grand Slam final at the 2007 US Open where the three-time reigning champion and number one Federer emerged victorious in straight sets. Federer ended Djokovic's perfect 41-0 start to the 2011 season in the semifinals of the French Open, but Djokovic was able to avenge this loss at the 2011 US Open in five sets after saving two match points against Federer for the second straight year. In the semi-finals of Wimbledon 2012, Federer beat defending champion and number one Djokovic in four sets. The two met again during the finals of the 2014 Wimbledon Championships with Djokovic emerging victorious after five sets. Federer also ended Djokovic's 28 straight wins in China at 2014 Shanghai Open. Federer and Djokovic rematched in the 2015 Wimbledon Championships with Djokovic once again claiming victory in four sets. The pair met once more for the final major of the season, the 2015 US Open and once more Djokovic prevailed in four sets. At the 2019 Wimbledon Championships, Djokovic bested Federer in an almost five-hour match whose final set went to a tie-break. This was the fifth consecutive time that Djokovic defeated Federer in Grand Slam matches. Some experts have included the rivalry between Federer and Djokovic as one of the best rivalries in the Open era. Federer vs. Murray Federer and Andy Murray have played 25 times, with Federer leading 14-11. Federer leads 12-10 on hard courts, and 2-1 on grass. They have never met on clay. The two have met six times at the Grand Slam tournament level, the first three times in the finals, Federer winning all three of these matches, at the 2008 US Open and the 2010 Australian Open, both of which he won in straight sets, and at the 2012 Wimbledon Championships in which Murray took the opening set, but went on to lose in four sets. However, Murray won their encounter in the semi-finals of the 2013 Australian Open, defeating Federer for the first time at a Grand Slam tournament in five sets. At the 2014 Australian Open, Federer reversed that result, defeating Murray in four sets in the quarter-finals. The most recent meeting between the two in a major was in the semi-finals of the 2015 Wimbledon Championships, where a dominant Federer triumphed in straight sets. They met in the final of the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, in which Murray defeated Federer in straight sets, denying Federer a career golden slam. Murray also leads 6-3 in ADP 1000 tournaments, 2-0 in finals. They have also met five times at the ADP World Tour finals, with Murray winning in Shanghai in 2008, 
and Federer in London in 2009, 2010, 2012, and 2014. Murray is one of only three players to have recorded 10 or more victories over Federer, the other two being Nadal and Novak Djokovic. Federer vs Roddick Main article, Federer-Roddick rivalry Federer and Andy Roddick played 24 times, and Federer leads their head-to-head 21-3. Roddick lost his number one ranking to Federer after Federer won his first Australian Open in 2004. Their rivalry includes four Grand Slam event finals, three at Wimbledon and one at the US Open, all won by Federer. Roddick himself said it was not much of a rivalry, being so one-sided. In the 2009 Wimbledon final, Roddick lost to Federer in five sets. The match included a 30-game fifth set a Grand Slam final record, and lasted over four hours. In the final game of the deciding set, Roddick's serve was broken for the first time in the match. With that victory, Federer broke Pete Sampras' record of 14 Grand Slam singles titles, and Roddick apologized to Sampras, who was in attendance, for not being able to stop Federer. Federer vs. Hewitt Federer and Leighton Hewitt have played 27 times with Federer leading 18-9. Early in their careers, Hewitt dominated Federer, winning seven of their first nine meetings, including a victory from two sets down in the 2003 Davis Cup semi-final which allowed Australia to defeat Switzerland. This marked a turning point in the rivalry, as Federer won 16 of the next 18 meetings from 2004 onwards. This is Hewitt's longest rivalry as these two first played each other as juniors in 1996. They met in one Grand Slam tournament final, the 2004 US Open final, where Federer won his first US Open title in a lopsided encounter in which Federer scored a bagel on both sides of a second set tiebreak. Federer met Hewitt at six of the Grand Slam tournaments in which he lifted the trophy, including all five of his triumphs between 2004 and 2005. Their last meeting was at the 2014 Brisbane International, where Hewitt triumphed over Federer in three sets for his first title since 2010, when he also beat Federer to the Halley title. Hewitt and Federer teamed up in the men's doubles at Wimbledon in 1999. They lost in the third round to Jonas Bjorkman and Pat Rafter. Federer vs Nalbandian Federer and David Nalbandian have played 19 times, with Federer leading 11-8. David Nalbandian was Federer's biggest rival in his early career. Nalbandian dominated early on, winning their first five matches from 2002 to 2003. Federer reversed this trend at the 2003 Masters Cup, where he recorded his first victory, and went on to win 11 of their last 14 meetings. Federer leads 6-5 on hard courts, 1-0 on grass, and 3-1 on clay courts, while Nalbandian leads 2-1 on carpet. Notable meetings include Nalbandian's win in a fifth-set tiebreaker to win the 2005 Masters Cup, and Federer's win in the 2006 French Open semifinals. They met each other six times in Grand Slam tournaments, with Federer leading 4-2. Federer vs Safin Mara Safin and Federer played 12 times, with Federer leading 10-2. Federer and Safin turned pro within one year of each other, with Safin turning pro in 1997 and Federer in 1998. Federer leads 4-1 on hard courts, 3-0 on grass, and 3-0 on clay courts, while Safin leads 1-0 on carpet. Notable meetings include Federer's defeating Safin at the 2002 Hamburg Masters to win the first Masters 1000 title of his career, as well as Federer's emerging victorious in the semifinals of the 2004 Tennis Masters Cup, after winning a tiebreak 2018 on his eighth match point. Federer also defeated Safin in the finals of the 2004 Australian Open to capture his first Australian Open and second Grand Slam tournament title. However, Safin defeated Federer in the 2005 Australian Open semi-finals, having saved one match point in the fourth set tiebreak, to end a 26-match winning streak by Federer. They met each other five times in Grand Slam tournaments, with Federer leading 4-1. Federer vs Agassi Federer and Andre Agassi played 11 times, 
and Federer leads their head-to-head 8-3. This was Federer's most significant rivalry with a dominant player of the previous generation. They first met in only the third tournament of Federer's career at the 1998 Swiss Indoors in Federer's hometown, with Andre Agassi prevailing over the 17-year-old. Agassi also defeated Federer at the 2001 US Open and the finals of the Miami Masters in 2002. Federer began to turn the tide at the Masters Cup in 2003 when he defeated Agassi in both the round-robin and the final. They played a memorable quarter-final match at the 2004 US Open that spanned over two days, with Federer eventually prevailing in five sets. At the 2005 Dubai Championships, Federer and Agassi attracted worldwide headlines with a publicity stunt that saw the two men play on a helipad almost 220 meters above sea level at the Hotel Burj Al Arab. Their final match was at one of the most prestigious platforms in the sport, when they played in the finals of the 2005 US Open. Federer was victorious in four sets, claiming the sixth Grand Slam tournament of his career and denying Agassi his ninth. Federer vs Varinka Federer and his fellow Swiss player Stan Varinka have played each other 26 times, with Federer leading 23-3. Federer leads 7-1 in Grand Slam tournaments. 17-0 on hard courts, 1-0 on grass courts and 5-3 on clay courts. The pair are 1-1 in finals. Their first meeting in a final came at 2014 Monte Carlo Rolex Masters where Varinka defeated Federer in three sets to win his first Masters 1000 title before Federer avenged his loss at the 2017 BNP Paribas Open by beating him in the final. While the rivalry is one-sided in Federer's favor, the two have contested some close matches. Varinka defeated Federer in straight sets during the 2015 French Open quarterfinals en route to winning his first French Open title, although Federer then won a straight sets victory in the 2015 US Open semifinals. Other close matches include the 2012 Shanghai Masters and the 2013 Indian Wells Masters, both of which Federer won in three sets, the 2014 Wimbledon quarterfinal which Federer won in four sets, the 2014 ADP World Tour final semi-final, which Federer won in three sets after saving four match points, and the 2017 Australian Open semi-final, which Federer won in five sets. Despite their on-court rivalry, they are friends off-court, and they have played doubles together on numerous occasions, most notably when they won the doubles Olympic gold at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and when winning the 2014 Davis Cup. Federer vs Del Potro Juan Martin Del Potro and Roger Federer have played 25 times, with Federer leading 18-7. They have met seven times in Grand Slam tournaments, with Federer leading 5-2. Their two most famous Grand Slam tournament meetings came in 2009. The first was in the French Open semi-finals, when Federer survived a five-set clash when he was on his way to the only French title of his career. The second was in the final of the US Open, where Del Potro beat five-time defending champion Federer in five sets, ending his 20-match winning streak at Grand Slams. Another high-profile match was in the semi-finals of the 2012 London Olympics where Federer prevailed 1917 in the final set to secure the Olympic silver medal. They also met in the finals of the Swiss indoors in 2012, 2013 and 2017, with Del Potro prevailing on first two occasions, and Federer on last one of them in tight three-set matches. In the 2017 US Open quarterfinals, in a rematch of the 2009 US Open final, Del Potro again beat Federer in four sets to end his unbeaten streak in Grand Slams that year. With this win, Del Potro also denied the first Federer-Nadal match at US Open, as in 2009 where he beat Nadal in straight sets in the semifinals. Federer, however avenged this loss at the Shanghai Masters semifinals, where he beat Del Potro in three sets after coming from a set down. In the final at the 2018 BNP Paribas Open Del Potro beat Federer in three close sets, after facing match points in the third set. With this win Del Potro won his first Masters 1000 title of his career. Federer vs Berdych Tomas Berdych and Federer have played 26 times, 
with Federer leading 26. Federer leads 12-5 on hard courts, 3-1 on grass courts, 4-0 on clay courts, and 1-0 on carpet. Berdych won their first professional match, notably upsetting then no one Federer at the 2004 Summer Olympics. Federer then went on to win their next eight meetings, before Berdych ended the losing streak in 2010. Between 2010 and 2013, Berdych won five of eight meetings. Federer again took lead of the matchup after he switched to a larger racket in 2014, leading 9-0 since then. They have met 10 times in Grand Slam tournaments, with Federer leading 8-2, and Berdych is one of five players, along with Arnaud Clement, Alex Karitia, David Nalbandian, and Joe Wilfried Tsonga, to defeat Federer multiple times in majors before the semi-final stage. Their most notable Grand Slam matches took place in the 2009 Australian Open, when Federer prevailed in five sets after dropping the first two sets, the 2010 Wimbledon Championships and the 2012 US Open, both of which Berdych won in four sets. Berdych went on to reach the only Grand Slam final of his career after the Wimbledon quarter-final victory, ending Federer's run of seven consecutive finals at Wimbledon dating back to 2003. Federer vs Tsonga Joe Wilfried Tsonga and Federer have played 18 times, with Federer leading 12-6. Federer leads 5-3 on outdoor hard courts and 4-0 on indoor hard. They are 1-1 on grass and 2-2 on clay courts. The pair have met six times in Grand Slam tournaments, including their five-set matches in the quarterfinals of 2011 Wimbledon and 2013 Australian Open. They have also won Grand Slam semi-final meeting in the 2010 Australian Open, with Federer winning in straight sets. Federer and Tsonga have played in the 2011 ADP World Tour Finals final, with Federer winning his record sixth year-end championship in three sets. The pair have also met in two ADP World Tour Masters 1000 finals. The first was in the 2011 BNP Paribas Masters, with Federer winning his first title in Bercy and the second was in the 2014 Rogers Cup, with Tsonga winning his second Masters 1000 title. Federer vs Silic Federer and Marin Silic have played 10 times, with Federer leading 9-1. Silic's only victory came in the 2014 US Open semifinals, after which he went on to win the Grand Slam title. Their first encounter was in the third round in the 2008 Paris Masters, which Federer won in straight sets. They have played five Grand Slam matches, two in Wimbledon, two in the US Open, and one at the 2018 Australian Open, Federer leads these matches 4-1. Two of these have been Grand Slam finals the 2017 Wimbledon final, which Federer won in straight sets, and the 2018 Australian Open final, which Federer won in five sets. Achievements Main article, List of Career Achievements by Roger Federer Roger Federer has spent a total of 310 weeks and 237 consecutive weeks at the top of the ADP rankings, the most of any player. He dominated the game at his peak and has won more Grand Slam tournament titles, 20, than any other men's singles player. He is also the first men's singles player to have reached 10 consecutive Grand Slam tournament finals and a total of 31 Grand Slam finals. He has earned a men's doubles gold medal and a men's single silver medal at the Olympics in 2008 and 2012, respectively. He has spent the most amount of time in the open era at the top of the ADP rankings, 310 weeks. He also holds the record for the most titles, 6, at the year-end tournament, where only the year-end 8 highest-ranked players participate. Federer was ranked among the top eight players in the world continuously for 14 years and two weeks from October 14, 2002 until October 31, 2016, when injuries forced him to skip much of the 2016 season. Federer has won the ADP Player of the Year five times, 2004 07, 2009, and has become ITF World Champion five times. 2004 07, 2009. He has won the ADP World Tour.com fans' favorite award a record 16 times consecutively 2003 18, 
and has won the Stefan Edberg Sportsmanship Award, voted for by the players, a record 13 times, 2004-09, both being awards indicative of respect and popularity. He also won the Arthur Ashe Humanitarian of the Year Award twice, 2006-2013, the Laureus World Sportsman of the Year five times, 2005-08-2018, and the Laureus World Comeback of the Year once, following his 2017 renaissance. Federer is one of the founders, via his management company TEAM8, of the Labour Cup, the annual team tennis tournament which pits Europe against the rest of the world. He co founded the tournament in honour of tennis legend Rod Laver and the inaugural edition was played in 2017. In 2018, Federer returned to the Australian Open to defend his 2017 title and won his 20th Grand Slam tournament. Rafael Nadal with his 2019 French Open win, sits two behind Roger. Legacy and Cultural Impact Roger Federer has huge popularity in the world of sport, to the point that he has been called a living legend in his own time. Given his achievements, Federer is widely considered to be one of the greatest tennis players of all time, with many players and analysts considering him to be the greatest tennis player of all time. He has also been called the greatest athlete of his generation. Tennis.com listed him as the greatest male player of the Open era. No other male tennis player has won 20 major singles titles in the Open era, and he has been in 31 major finals, including 10 in a row. He has held the world number one spot in the ADP rankings for longer than any other male player. He was ranked number one at the age of 36 and has won a record eight Wimbledon titles. He won five consecutive U.S. Open titles, which is the most in the Open era. He has been voted by his peers to receive the Tour Sportsmanship Award a record 13 times and voted by tennis fans to receive the ADP Fans Favorite Award for 15 consecutive years. Federer has been named the Swiss Sports Personality of the Year a record seven times. He has been named the ADP Player of the Year and ITF World Champion five times and he has won the Laureus World Sportsman of the Year award a record five times, including four consecutive awards from 2005 to 2008. He is also